And uh, I want to look at something that is slightly, well, actually, no, beyond slightly. It is deeply disturbing me at the moment. I am deeply uncomfortable that legacy media, mainstream media, whatever you want to call it, have decided to set itself up again as troll hunters. Um, and uh, I mean, you can actually see on the screen the face of a lady known as Brenda Leyland. And Brenda Leyland is a perfect, very sad example of the last time mainstream media set themselves up as troll hunters. Let me explain. This weekend, the Mail on Sunday tracked down an anonymous TikTok user who has asked questions about Kate Middleton. The wording in the article is almost identical to when the media went after its previous prey, which was, as I say, Brenda Leyland. They tell us that Paul Condren, an internet user described as a, in quotes, cruel British troll who used Chinese social media platform TikTok to cash in on lurid Kate claims, is a masked at last. The language continues. The aim is to incite their reader to absolutely hate this person. The male, as I say, was able to track down what they called a toxic troll to his girlfriend's two-bedroom home in southwest London, probably quite close to me. Um, they say that Condren's other, vid uh, other videos give his warped take on COVID, the Israeli-Gaza conflict. Uh, chances are they probably align with where I'm coming from. Um, and I am deeply concerned at this moment for Mr. Condren's safety. Hopefully he's in a better place than Brenda Leyland was when the media went after her. If you're not familiar with Brenda Leyland, let me share her story because it's just so sad and it tells us so much about legacy media and when they pick their targets. Brenda's story is featured in my documentary, Madeleine McCann, Public Relations and Saving Reputations. And it's about really the whole big media storm that exists around the world's most famous missing child. Brenda was a social media user who, like many people, did not believe the official abduction narrative. Brenda, she'd contacted me previously. She'd read the Portuguese police files and she was extremely well versed in the details of Madeleine McCann's disappearance. And uh, supporters um, with uh, of the of the McCanns, with the support of a former cop, pulled together a dossier of people who were questioning the official narrative. I featured in the dossier, proudly so. Um, that was handed to Metropolitan Police to investigate. And because, of course, no one is allowed to question the narrative of the world's most famous missing child, whom British taxpayers have paid over £40 million to investigate investigate her disappearance for a crime that didn't happen in this country. But you be quiet. You shut up and put up. And anyway, so what they did was this dossier had been given to Sky News and in particular their reporter Martin Brunt, who saw fit to doorstep a private individual. I think there's a whole different world to me doorstepping politicians and public figures to going after a private individual who's making comments on the Internet. Right. Brenda, as I say, she was named in the dossier. They doorstepped her at a quiet Leicestershire home in Burton Overy. I went to Burton Overy. I went to her home um, after her death to report from there. The confrontation was played on repeat rotation for 24 damn hours. I can't I can't overstate that. It's just horrendous what that did to that woman. And then MSM came together to denounce her and they hounded Brenda out of her home. She upped and left. She checked into a local hotel and two days later she was found dead. I went to the various inquests and I'm in no doubt whatsoever that this was not only trial by media, but they essentially drove Brenda to her death by deeming her a troll. It impacted her, her entire life so great, greatly that it did actually influence her decision to kill herself. If indeed that is what happened, because some people even question that official narrative and certainly having witnessed the inquest, I had many, many questions. Not least, I actually witnessed the coroner flirting with Martin Brunt. Like, oh, he's a TV star. It was one of the most egregious inquests I've ever witnessed, frankly. My point is this. When mainstream media target someone as a troll, they do not care about the damage they are doing to that person's life. And let us be clear here. When mainstream media call people trolls, it's because people are usually asking the type of questions that mainstream media routinely refuse to ask. They are either compromised or in, in debt to something, including information from the royal family, the McCanns or whomever, really. And they seek to protect that person from whom they deem to be the troll. And they set out 
to destroy without a care the private lives of private citizens. So, yes, I am deeply concerned for Paul because he's clearly being set up in the same way as Brenda Leyland, who died almost 10 years ago now. So rest in peace, Brenda Leyland and anybody else who dares to ask questions about official narratives and are then targeted by, well, the establishment's favourite media, legacy media. And on that note, let's go and look at some real decent headlines from a real decent journalist. Gemma Cooper. Keeping the commitment 24-7. I've been in the car all day and I got to listen. Can't get enough of it. You guys are doing a great job. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. This is indeed today's News Talk TNT. It's Tuesday morning. It's just gone 10 past eight in the UK. And this is Gemma Cooper with the second round of UK headlines today. How are you again, Gemma? Anything interesting occurred in the last hour? Well, it's just listening to that, actually. That's a story. I remember that story at the time. And I do remember it was before I was truly awake. I was having my, the glimmerings of my awakening, my spiritual shift. Um, so I was still and I was still in the legacy media. And I remember the treatment of, of Brenda. And uh, I remember reading how they presented her. And I was thinking, oh, my God, she's just an evil, unhinged, mentally ill woman. They really did a hatchet job on her. It was so convincing. And yet, you know, now I've, I've had my shift and I see things as they really are. All she was was one of us, somebody who was questioning official versions of events, which still to this day with Madeleine McCann remain completely unsolved. And as you rightly say, millions of taxpayers' money on a very high profile case. There's so many unanswered questions with that. Richard D. Hall with his forensic analysis uh, and his his Madeleine documentary series. Um, I, I would urge anyone to go and watch that. There's loads of unanswered questions. And of course, she's one of us. She She questioned things. And isn't it interesting that the mainstream media with its paradoxical hypocrisy would say this person is an awful troll and she's distressing the McCanns therefore she must die you know it's almost like the last four years of covid you know let's drag people out onto the streets and bludgeon right. them to death for not getting vaccinated to stop people dying that's where the the gap is in between people who are completely brainwashed and inured to the system and how could you dare question authority it's that's the truth uh, and people like us that go no authorities lied all since in civilization, the authority has lied and will continue to lie to protect itself. Um, and you have to have a perception shift. Now, Martin Brunt, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Deathbed revelations are very common. Maybe he will realize, oh my God, my whole life has been a lie. I had that point in my career as in the mainstream. My whole life has been a lie. How is this a valid way to make a living? But before that, I was in it. I was in it and I believed it. It is an internal thing. It's not an intellectual thing. Um, but, you know, they handed that woman to her death and because she upset the McCann, so, so so we'll go after her. You know, we'll do the very thing we're accusing her of, and we won't see that we're doing it. Oh, that one is making my blood boil, actually, uh, Sonia. It really is on a Tuesday. That one. Oh. Didn't mean to. Oh. I didn't mean to. I should say Martin Brunt has said, and he did say at the inquest that this will haunt him for the rest of his days. Um, that it wasn't his choice to put it out. He actually did speak to her. She gave him time after he doorstepped her initially. He waited outside her home, and she'd gone out to lunch with a friend. She came back and then invited him in. Spent half an hour explaining to him about the police files, about all, the whole investigation, and he still went away still produced that report she rang him the following day he asked her how she was she said she felt suicidal and they still went ahead with the report and as i say on repeat rotation it was absolutely horrendous even the um report the sort of witness statement from her son was demonizing it talked about her with mental health issues and a lot of it overlooked the fact which i later find found out was about her community spirit at burton overy she was a regular member of the church congregation she did loads in the community and for charity that was completely overlooked as you say she was demonized she was a monster this woman must be stopped and all for daring to ask questions and and we're seeing it repeatedly aren't we you're, you're literally not allowed to ask questions anymore you even said this yesterday Gemma which you know one of the reasons that people love you Gemma is because you're just so clear and you have such clarity of thought which you're able to articulate so well and one of the things that you said yesterday very simplistic was about this idea that we we, we are just allowed to ask questions that you know where where have people been for the last four years this whole idea that we aren't allowed to ask questions and if we do we're conspiracy theorists and then we're contributing to the clampdown of, of our freedoms. 